Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating some Sunray images in Illustrator. I'm using the new Illustrator CC 2018, but this is going to work in any version of Illustrator. I'm creating a new file. Mine is 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size, but yours could be any size you like. I'm just going to click Create. Now I'm going to zoom out here a little bit because I want to see more than just my artboard. So I want my artboard to be about this size. I'm going to the polygon tools. I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to click once in my document because I want control of my polygon. I want it to have three sides, so I'm making sure it type three there. The radius does not matter at this stage. Just click OK. Now we're going to the selection tool. I'm just going to drag down on the bottom of this triangle because I want to create a sort of long narrow triangle well over the edge of the artboard. Now I'm going to fill this triangle with black and I'm going to turn off the stroke. I'm positioning it so that the point of the triangle is in the center of this shape. You can do it by just looking at the guides that are going to show you when you have it centered or you can do it by reading off the values. So up here I've got this point selected which is the middle of the top points and its position because my artboard is 1000 by 1000 pixels in size should be halfway across. So it should be at 500, 500 and you can see here that it is. So my triangle has its center point right in the middle of my artboard. I'll select my triangle. I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. And I'll make sure that Preview is turned on. I want to rotate my triangle around this point, the same point that we just lined up in the middle of the artboard. And so that's the top middle of these nine little boxes. So you'll need to select that. I'm thinking that I probably want about 18 of these triangles. So in here I'm going to type 360, which is the number of degrees in a circle, and then a forward slash and the number 18. And when I tab away, Illustrator makes the calculation that each one of these triangles needs to be rotated 20 degrees to make 18 triangles all the way around my shape. Now, if I want 18 triangles, that means I want an original plus 17 copies. So I'm just going to type 17 here. At this point, we can have a look at our sun ray and see if it's what we want. Well, I kind of like the number of rays that I've got, but I think my ray is too wide. Well, we can solve that a different way. I'm just going to click OK. With the selection tool still selected, I'm going to hold the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac, and just drag in on one of these side handles on this shape. That just brings both sides in equally. And I can use that technique to adjust the size of my triangle until I'm happy with what I'm seeing on the screen. At this point, everything is associated with this one triangle. So if I move the triangle, the entire shape moves with it. If you want individual sun rays, then you're going to need to expand this shape. You'll choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And then you should choose Object Ungroup and continue to do that until Ungroup is no longer an option. When you do that in the Layers palette, you should see that you have individual shapes. Nothing is inside a group. At this point, if you did want to put everything in a group, you would just choose Object and then Group. This will give you a much neater Layers palette. If you want alternating colors, you can place a rectangle behind the sun rays. I'll choose the Rectangle tool. I'll create a rectangle 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size. Click OK. I'm going to center it over the artboard, so I'll choose the Align tab. I'll make sure that the options are shown so that I can see these options down here. If they're not visible, you'll come up here, click the Flyout menu and choose Show Options. Set it to Align to Artboard and then you can center the shape on the artboard by just clicking these icons. The shape then needs to be moved behind everything by choosing Object Arrange and then Send to Back. At this point, you can change the color of the rectangle so that you have a two color sunburst. If you're not happy with the triangles being outside the artboard, you have a couple of options. And one of those is to crop the triangles to the artboard shape. For this, I'm going to create a second rectangle exactly the same size as the first. And I'm going to center it over the artboard. 
I'm going to select the rectangle and all the triangles. I'm just going to drag over everything to select it. I'm going to the Pathfinder tab, which you can also get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder. In the Pathfinder tab, we have an option here called Crop. It uses the topmost shape and it crops all the shapes below to that shape. So I'll just click it once. And we've cropped our sunburst to the size of our artboard. Now let's look at creating a second sunburst a little bit differently. I'll choose File and New and create another document exactly the same size, 1000 by 1000 pixels in size. I'm going to again create a triangle, so I'm going to the Polygon tool. Click once in the document, set the sides to 3, don't worry about what the radius is, click OK. I'm going to make this black filled and I'm going to remove the stroke from it. I'm also going to zoom out so I can see things way more clearly. I'm going to make my triangle into a long thin triangle by stretching it, dragging on its handles and then Alt or Option dragging on the sides just to bring it in. Now I'm going to the twirl tool because I want a sort of curvy triangle. So I'll select the twirl tool which shares a toolbar position with the width tool. I'm also going to double click on it because I need to set it up to work correctly. I want my twirl brush to be pretty much the size of my artboard, so I'm going to set it to 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels in size, a nice big brush. I'm setting the intensity to 10%, by default it's 50%, 10% is just fine, you don't want it to twirl too much, and I'll click OK. You can see I have a nice big twirl brush, so with the object selected I'm just going to click to twirl it. And you could undo this and do it again if you don't get a really nice twirl the first time. I've just been really lucky. So let's go to our selection tool. And when I select on this shape, you'll see that unlike the triangle previously, where the point of the triangle is right in the middle of this shape, this time the point of the triangle is a little bit offset. So we're not going to get such a good result if we try and rotate it around the central point. So we're going to use a different rotation tool. I'm going here to this rotate tool. I'm going to click on it once and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hold my mouse pointer over the very, very tip of this curvy shape. Hold down the Alt key option on a Mac and click once. That sets this point as the rotation point. Now it's defaulting here to 20 degrees because I've used that previously. If, for example, you want 18 of these shapes around this central point, you'll just type 360 divided by 18, let Illustrator do the math. If you wanted 15 of them, you type 360 divided by 15, and Illustrator is going to determine what the angle needs to be. Now we need not only the original shape, but also this duplicate, so I'm going to click Copy. So I now have my first two rotations. It's very easy for me now to get the remainder of them by holding down the control key on a PC, that's command on a Mac, and just tap the letter D. And every time I tap the letter D with the control or command key selected, I'm going to make an additional copy of this shape rotated through the number of degrees that I've specified. So I now have the shapes that I want. And if we have a look in the layers palette, you'll see that each one of these is an individual shape. So it's very different to using repeat and transform. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and I want to make sure that they're centered on the artboard. So I'll choose object group. That groups them as a single object, which I can now center. So I'm going to click the horizontal and vertical align options. As I did previously, I can add a color behind us by adding a rectangle the size of the artboard. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make it a different color. Let's go for a sort of turquoise blue this time. And let's move it behind with Object Arrange, Center Back. And with it selected, let's also square it up over the artboard. Now last time we cropped our sunburst to the size of the artboard. Let's do things a little differently this time. I'm going back to my rectangle tool. I'm going to make another 1000 by 1000 pixel rectangle over the top of the artboard. And I'm just going to make sure that it's centered over the artboard. Now I'm going to select it and this group of objects underneath. So I'm going to use the layers palette to do that. Click on the rectangle, shift click on this group. 
and I'm going to right click and choose Make Clipping Mask. Now you can also do that from the Object menu and it's Object Clipping Mask Make. Now the difference between cropping and using a clipping mask is this. In the Layers palette we now have a clipping group and there's a rectangle that is the object that we're clipped to and there's our group of objects. If I select my group of objects I can move them. So they're still being clipped to the artboard shape with that rectangle but they're movable because they haven't actually been cropped away. So if you want a bit more flexibility you may choose to use a clipping group instead of actually cropping your sunburst to shape. Now I'm just going to press Control or Command 0 so I can look at things a little more clearly. I'm going to select everything with Select All and I'm going to recolor this sunburst. I'm going to use the Recolor tool to do it. So I'll click Recolor Artwork. Here you can see that the blue is mapped onto itself but the black isn't mapped onto anything. So I'm going to click here once and add a color to the color group. Make sure I've got arrows between each of these colors so that they can all be recolored. Now I'm going to the edit option. Need to find my black in here and this is the black one here. So I'm just going to increase the brightness and increase the saturation so that we can get access to some additional colors to use for this particular black color where we're replacing it with something a little bit more interesting. And now we've got the blue here and we can just drag it around. So you can create a sunburst in any set of colors. All you need to do is be aware of how you're going to recolor it once you've actually created it. So this can be adapted to a whole series of different colors. So let's just go and get something sort of yellowy and ready here. And I'm going to add a new color group for that. So I'll just click here to add this as a new color group and click OK. So those are two different Sunray images created using different techniques that you might find appropriate to use in your own workflow. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Illustrator techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.